Hello, welcome to Raymond Castile's Basement of Horror. Today, we're going to look at this nifty little thing. Look at that. Inside the mind of Coffin Joe. I wasn't sure if I was going to do an unboxing video for this thing. Uh, I just felt like there's already a hundred other unboxing videos. I mean, what am I going to say? Take the stuff off and say, look how cool this is. <sighs> Someone in a comment asked me if I was going to do an unboxing video. And I said, I don't know. And finally I decided, okay, I, I guess I, I need to do a, an unboxing video. It's not going to be very different from all the other unboxing videos you've seen. I mean, there's a lot of unboxing videos for this set. I do have two of them. Uh, I did not order these, so I guess I have to disclose I did not pay for these. But that's not because they wanted me to review it. It's because I participated in this box set in a small way, uh, but nevertheless, I, I did participate in this box set. So they sent me two free ones. Now... I, I haven't opened these, obviously. Uh, these are from the first run. So, Awakening of the Beast. And you've probably heard by now, if you're interested in this box set, you've heard that Awakening of the Beast has a problem with the subtitles. The subtitles end at about 33 minutes. And I assume the discs in these boxes have that problem. Another reason I wasn't going to do an unboxing video is because I wanted to wait and make sure that Arrow Video was going to fix that. I didn't want to uh, suggest that people buy a box set that had a problem with it. But now Arrow Video has said that they are going to issue replacement discs uh, and also they, they, they suspended sales of this set while they fixed that problem. At first it was listed as ready to ship, and then it was unavailable, and people thought it sold out. I don't think it sold out. I think that Arrow pulled it while they fixed that issue, and now it's available for sale again. Now, I don't have uh, the replacement disc yet, but Arrow Video has said on their website that they are issuing replacement discs, and they have a, a method for people who've already bought it to get the replacement disc. If they order direct from Arrow, then they don't really have to do anything. They should just automatically get the discs. So now I feel comfortable talking about this because I'm not uh, suggesting people buy something that has a problem. Okay, so here it is. Like I said, I don't, I don't really have anything to offer with this <laughs> unboxing that's any different from everything you've seen before. There have been a lot of unboxing videos. I, it actually makes me very happy to see so many uh, American English language videos on YouTube talking about Coffin Joe. It, it, it pleases me. Here are the... Here are the movies in the set. Eleven films including a documentary about Mujica. Well, where can I start with this thing? I'm not going to open both. I'm going to save one with the shrink wrap, and then I'll I'll open the other one for you. And that's I haven't watched these. I've had this for like a month now, but I, I haven't watched them because I thought if I do an unboxing, I want to actually open it on camera. And oh, here's Billy. Is he going to come say hello? Hey, Billy. You can come up here. Billy is my cat if you have never watched a, a video <laughs> on this channel before. Uh, so I wanted to open it on camera. So I have not watched these. I understand the transfers are excellent. They're all brand new 4K transfers. And I'm so happy that, that Mojica has 
this legacy now. It's he's. I feel like it, his legacy has been saved because for years, even when he was still alive, his films were thought to be. Well, there was a lot of. I don't want to say misinformation, but there was a lot of different information about what was happening with his films. And there was there was kind of like word on the street, so to speak, that his films were in less than ideal conditions. Uh, his films were being stored in a, in a, a, a vault where the climate control wasn't what you would like. Brazil has had a lot of political upheaval in recent years, and I'm not qualified to really talk about that in detail, just as we've had a volatile political era, and we're still in that era. We're in a very rough era politically. Brazil has also gone through a very rough era politically, and I heard rumors that the vault where Mujica's films were being stored uh, had been shut down and the people who worked there had been locked out and the climate control had been turned off because the government thought that the films being stored there were objectionable, um, deviant art, so to speak, if you know that reference, I don't need to go into detail, but they thought that was a place where deviant art was being stored, so to speak. And uh, <laughs> if what I was hearing was that they really would have liked to have just destroyed it. Now, I don't know if that's true or rumor or hyperbole, but I was, and many other Mujica fans were very worried for a couple of years we were afraid his legacy was going to be destroyed. And I thought, gosh, why, why, hasn't, why haven't these films been saved long before this? Why, why didn't they have 4K transfers 10 years ago or more? Why did it come to this, this crisis point? And again, I, I've heard other things that those fears were unfounded, that the films, the, the ones that people most care about anyway, were not in that archive, they were in a different place, and they had been stored in a different place all along, and they were actually safe all along. I don't know, I don't know. But even if that was true, even if they were in a safe place, uh, just the political climate and things that politicians were saying in Brazil, very anti-art and particularly anti the kind of art Mujica creates, and Mujica was very political, in his lifetime, he ran for office and he was very vocal about politicians he liked and politicians he didn't like. Mostly politicians he didn't like. He, was, he put curses on them. Like on video, he, as Coffin Joe in costume, he put curses on politicians he didn't like. Um, so the, the, <laughs> the party that was in power was a party that he didn't like historically. And you know, I'm not, I'm not there. I could be wrong about everything I'm saying. Take it with a grain of salt. This is coming from someone thousands of miles away in a different culture who is not a native speaking Brazilian. I can't speak Portuguese fluently. So I'm very removed from the reality of what was going on. I'm just hearing things secondhand. I do have friends in Brazil and they talk to me online but they don't know everything that's going on. So I'm hearing a lot of stuff secondhand and it's like a game of telephone. By the time I hear it, who knows how it's been distorted. But I do think that there was a real reason to worry about Mojica's films and the films of other underground artists and, and the, the art, not just films, but other kinds of art created by other underground artists. That we had a political regime that was very hard line against what it saw as corrupting art and films. Kind of reminds me of 
Awakening of the Beast, when Coffin Joe steps out on camera at the beginning of the movie and says his films are never corrupting, as some people claim. Well, I mean, that's all these years later, that's still a problem. There are still people out there in positions of power who would look at his work and say, it's corrupting. So I was worried, as were many other Mojica fans. I was hearing other people say that they were concerned. Now, Synapse, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a video company that had the rights to Mojica's films in the U.S. for many, many years. And they just sat on them. Synapse tends to sit on a lot of things. They've done some great releases, like um, last year they put out uh, Creature from Black Lake, a restoration of Creature from Black Lake. That's beautiful revelation. I love that. They do some good work, but they also tend to drag their feet and sit on stuff a long time without coming through with a release. And I don't need to get into particular titles, but there's various cult titles that they have the rights to or did have the rights to that should have come out and didn't. And there, it's, it, it's been a pattern. So they had the rights to Coffin Joe in the U.S., the, the films, to release the films on home video. And they sat and they sat and they sat for years. And then finally they put them out on DVD, not Blu-ray. And they claimed it was because the elements were in such bad condition, they, they couldn't be scanned, and they were not allowed to remove them from Brazil. So that was out of the question. To, in order to work on them, they had to take them out of Brazil. And they had all these excuses, as they often do, with the same kind of things I've heard with other releases. I was very unhappy. Now, now, Synapse released Embodiment of Evil in the U.S. I think they were the first company to release it. So I I feel like I'm sort of biting the hand that feeds me, not that I'm being fed anything, but yes, they were good to put that out, and I appreciate that they put that out, and they put out other things that I like, but I was very unhappy with the way that they sat on the Coffin Joe library and didn't do anything with it, and then finally just put out these the same old uh, standard definition transfers that were already had already been available on DVD, and they just put out those th same three films on DVD again. I did not like that. And I felt, I kind of blamed them. If, if something happens to his work because of the political situation, well, they had their chance and didn't, and they blew it. So I was unhappy with a lot of things. I'm, I'm just an unhappy guy. You might've noticed over the years, <laughs> I'm just an unhappy guy. That's kind of my attitude right there. See that? That's me. <laughs> That's, that's, that's my general feeling about life right there. Um, so then I, I knew the whole time they were saying, oh, we just can't do it. The, the elements are not good enough. It can't come out. I knew oh, if they would just get the rights out of their hands and get it to the right company, all that would be <laughs> moot. And thank goodness the right company got hold of the Coffin Joe Library. And what do you know? The elements were good enough to restore. And I don't know if they had to take them out of Brazil or not, but whatever they had to do, they did it. And they made beautiful, from what I understand, haven't watched them, but from the clips I've seen and stuff I've seen online, stuff other people said, they made beautiful transfers of these films exactly the way we wanted them done. They came through. They got it done. Arrow video. Thank you, Arrow video. Thank you. You got the job done. It just takes the right people in the right place to just get it done. And they did. <sighs> now, another reason. I wasn't going to do an unboxing, then I changed my mind. I watched, I watched a lot of unboxing videos of these things. And I've heard so many different mispronunciations of Mojica's name. 
I, I must have heard 50 different ways to pronounce his name. Jose Mojica. Uh, they, they usually do say Marins. They say that, but they say Jose Mo Mojica. Mozica, Mozica, or, oh my gosh, I don't know where they're getting some of this stuff. I understand why they would say Jose, because to an American English speaker, it looks like Jose. And Marins, they've, uh, they've they, Mayins, Mayin, Mayin, blah, 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 blah. They just, they've mangled it every way you can imagine. It's Jose Mojica Marins. That's his name, Jose Mojica Marins. That's his name. That's how he pronounced it. Some Brazilians say Marij. I never heard him say that. I'm mean, in person or in videos. He said his name. You can find him saying his name on camera. What I've heard him say is Jose Mojica Marins. Jose Mojica Marins. Now, I am an English speaking person, so I'm probably not pronouncing it as authentically as a Portuguese speaking Brazilian citizen would pronounce it. But I think I'm pretty close. And obviously, Jose is Joe, like Coffin Joe. It's, it's, that's why he's Coffin Joe. It's, it's Zé do Caixo. Zé is Jose. That's where the Zé comes from. Zé do Caixo. Zé of the coffin. Caixo is coffin. So it's not Jose. <laughs> it's, it's basically like Joseph, Jose, Jose Mojica Marines. Jose Mojica Marines. I'm, maybe I'm putting a little A on the, that I shouldn't be. Jose Mojica Marines. Um, so that's how you pronounce his name. It's not Jose Mojica, Mojica, Mayin, or whatever. Pfft, forget. That's not how you pronounce his name. So that was another reason after seeing the hundredth mispronunciation of his name. I just, oh my gosh. That was another motivation to do a video. Okay, well, I almost don't need to open them now, do I? I mean, after all that, I don't know what else I can offer um, as far as what I have to say about this. I, I gotta tell you that Arrow's promotion of this, I think it's pretty good. Like, they did a trailer that I like a lot. They did two trailers. One is a variety of releases, including this one, that ends in a, a very poignant way with Finnis Hominis, one of Mojica's characters, saying something like, uh, I have returned as I said I would, something like that. And that, that really got me as like, yes, this is like his curtain call. He has returned as he said he would. And then another trailer is just the set, which is really, really good. They really captured the appeal of Coffin Joe and, and Mujica's work in general. Um, let's see here. Let's see if there's something I should note about the box itself. Uh, nope, no surprises here. I don't think so. No, I'm just making sure there's nothing I might have overlooked. So which which one of these should I open up? They're nice, handsome little sets. Um, is is like is the cellophane the same with both of them? Yeah, and you know, the cellophane continues to shrink. So no, no matter what you do, you can't keep things perfect. The, the cellophane will shrink and tear. That's why vintage toys that have cellophane on them, a shrink wrap, not, not cellophane, shrink wrap. Vintage toys that have shrink wrap on them, if you pay more for that shrink wrap, look out because it, you probably notice it has a split here and there. It's going to have more splits because shrink wrap continues to shrink. That's why vintage toys have splits in the shrink wrap. And when they don't have splits, the box bows. You might have noticed some model kits. Um, like, let's say, the Dark Shadows Barnabas Collins game with the teeth and skeletons. The bottom part of that is sealed shrink wrap, and the lid is not. The lid is, 
you can lift it off. If you see a shrink-wrapped version of that game, it's bent to pieces. It just looks ridiculous. It's bending and bowing, and the box is caving in on itself because that shrink wrap is pulling it. If you see some of the Imagineering makeup kits, the big ones, like I have a, I think it's the clown kit. Don't have the melting man. I got the clown kit. It's also bowing and pushing in because of the shrink wrap. Uh, some some model kits obviously uh, have that problem with the if it still has the shrink wrap, the model kit box is bowing inward and it's concave. And it, it it's the box is being ruined by the shrink wrap. So it's almost better if the shrink wrap splits because then it takes the pressure off. So no matter what you do, shrink wrap will split or it will destroy the box. One of the two. These are very sturdy boxes, so I think in this case the shrink wrap will split. Well, I think I'm going to open that one. So let's put this over here. Okay. Need to make a drinking game out of how many times I say okay in these videos. Okay. 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 Okay, here we go. Oh, I should, I'm supposed to do this on camera. <laughs> I don't know the first thing about unboxing videos. Because I don't do unboxing videos. This is a mint and box, mint and package channel. I, everything's, I don't open stuff. Okay, here we go. Isn't it amazing seeing the cellophane come off the box? It's so entertaining. There we are, there we are. Ta-da! Amazing. It's like a magic trick. The shrink wrap was on the box. Now it's off the box. Now Coffin Joe is allowed to be let loose upon the world. It has this flap. This comes off. And on the back is a different version of the same artwork. It's not exactly the same. It's got... Uh, his hand up in front of his face. Now they put a lot of detail uh, into this artwork. They, they could have just, they didn't even need to have any artwork. They could just have that. Or they could have had the same artwork. Instead, it's different. I'm going to leave this flap attached for now. Okay, here is the, is it, you got to take a drink when I say okay. Okay, here's the top. I'm gonna to lift his hat up. <laughs> it's so cute. He's got a, it's made like it's his hat. And when you lift it up, you're taking his hat off. You're looking inside the mind of Coffin Joe. And that's what's inside his mind. I think that is indeed what's inside Coffin Joe's mind. Is it the same on both sides? It looks like it is, yeah. I might look at it more carefully later and find differences, but I think it's the same artwork. I'm talking about this. Not This is obviously different, but this is, I think, the same on both sides. And that's just black on either side. So just the box is so cool. I mean, I like the box. It, it means an experience. Just opening the box, you it, it feels special. It feels like an experience, like you're you're really in for something. That's what the stuff looks like in there. Okay, take a drink. Let's get this stuff off out of here. Just white in there. That's a nice box. That's a substantial box. It's a sturdy box. And the lid is just white in there. And I don't think there's a front or a back to this lid. He's got his hat back on. Got You have to keep a lid on that mind. You don't want... It's like Pandora's box. You don't want that getting loose. 
Got to keep a lid on. Keep that hat on there. But that is just brilliant. That design. I, this is this is one of the best home video package designs I've ever seen. It's so creative and it's so on target. Yeah, you could say, well, is this art a little, perhaps a little too modern for what Coffin Joe is? I don't think so. I think it. I think it fits. It works. I think it's appropriate. Sometimes the Criterion Collection puts very modern-looking artwork on, on their packages for old films. And I don't like that. Sometimes it, it feels wrong. It feels like they're trying to present the film as something it's not. But I don't think that's the case here. I think this is appropriate. I think Mojica would approve of this. His films are so ahead of their time they don't seem like old films. They seem very modern. They seem cutting edge. I mean, there was, there's never been anything like those movies before or since. Well, look at these videos in a second. It has this amazing poster, which I was going to put up on the wall, but I thought, then, then I have to open the thing before I shoot the video, and I didn't want to do that. But it's the same, it's double-sided, it's the same art that's on the box. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to put it back exactly like it was. Okay, there we go. All right. Yeah, put that right there. Here's this beautiful book and it's not a booklet this is a book coffin joe against the world i love that title because that sums it up it sums up coffin joe it sums up mojica and it sums up uh, his fans i mean that's the way i feel that's one of the reasons that i'm attracted to this character and this filmmaker because i can identify with that i can identify with that feeling and it, it's, that's definitely the feeling you get watching his films. It really is. It's Mojica against the world. And it's his character against the world. Because Coffin Joe, it's not just the character. Mojica became known somewhat to his dismay as Coffin Joe. So people called him Coffin Joe in real life. So I think this title refers both to the filmmaker and the character. And this is a shot from the end. I mean, it's a painting, but it's based on a shot from the end of At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul, the first Coffin Joe movie. This is how it ends. I guess it's a spoiler. It ends with Coffin Joe apparently dead with his eyes bulging out like that. But as we know, he's not dead. And, you know, I think as this, this video attests, he's still not dead. He's right here. He's never going to die. As Coffin Joe said in Embodiment of Evil, images don't die. That's my favorite line of the movie. Images don't die. He's, his reflection is... One of his enemies sees his reflection in a mirror and shoots the mirror. The mirror shatters and then from off screen, Coffin Joe says, images don't die. Well, let's see here. What do we got? Uh, I've seen videos of this, this, this book, going through this book. And it's, it looks amazing. I, it's definitely a book that I want to seriously read. I'm not just going to flip through it like I would a, a lot of home video, you know, Blu-ray booklets. I'll, I might skim through it, look at a few things. But this is one I'm going to read like a book. And I recognize some of these names. And I'm, I'm reading the credits for this whole project. Uh, let's see here. Now I wanted to, and I, I've avoided saying the name of the artist because I wanted to make sure I got it right, but now I'm, I'm looking at it here. Butcher Billy. 
and the des- that's he he's the artist who did the, all the artwork for this thing and the designs by a firm called Obviously Creative. And I have to take my hat off to Obviously Creative. They did a fantastic job. And Butcher Billy did a fantastic job. And I'd never heard of Butcher Billy before this project, but since then I've heard, I've, now, I, now that I know his name, now I notice it when people bring it up, he's quite well known and he has quite a following. And I wonder if his involvement is gonna bring some people to this that wouldn't otherwise pay attention. I, I wonder if there's some people who are fans of Butcher Billy's art who will try this out because he's involved and they might introduce some new people to Coffin Joe. I hope so. Uh, Let's see here. Looking through credits. A lot of names I recognize. All restoration work was completed in Sao Paulo, so they didn't have to remove the films from Brazil. Isn't that something? Wow. They could do it in Brazil. Amazing. And Paulo Sacramento managed the work. I supervised it. He, I've met him. He's Coffin Joe's, Mujica's biographer. He's a great guy. We really have him to thank for a lot of what happened with Mojica's legacy over the last 30 years. If it were not for him, I don't know. I don't know if people would know who in the United States to the same extent would know who Mojica is. I mean, they would, they might know, but it wouldn't be as, as, as popular, I think, without Paulo Sacramento and the work he's done. Yes, the something weird VHS tapes, I, th- I think, predated Paulo's involvement with Majika. I, th- I, I might be wrong about that. Um, but the real uh, surge of interest in Coffin Joe in the U.S. is a start in the 90s, but it was more this century, the 21st century. And you can credit Paulo with all that. I mean, he led the charge. He blew the trumpet and waved the flag and said, charge, and he made it happen. And Embodiment of Evil, the movie, probably wouldn't have happened without him. So he, people really need to thank him for the work he's done with Mujica and his legacy. Now, it's interesting that Embodiment of Evil is in 2K, because that apparently that's the original format for the film. It's a 2K film. I guess when they shot it, they shot it in 2K. But you know that was 2006 when they shot it. Well, let's let's look at some of this. See if there's anything I want to point out. It starts out with credits for each of the films. Now this is this is a, a Tim Lucas essay. Zedo Kai show the nightmare that must survive. And I've read that before because this was in a, a book that accompanied a film festival in Brazil years ago, and I've got the program for that festival. And this essay is in that book in that program for that festival. And if it's the same essay. He mentions me in here somewhere. Let's just see if I'm in. I can find that. And I know Tim Lucas. He's a great guy. I've met him several times. He's one of the monster kids. I've hung out with him in the old dark clubhouse. Well, it's not called the old dark clubhouse anymore. I forget what it's called now. Aha, here we go. Yep, 
it's still in there. So he does mention me. I'm not going to read what he says about me, but I am in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Tim's essay. I'm, I was very, when I read that in the, uh, it was many years ago in this program for the film festival, it was a retrospective of Mujica's films. I was very happy that he mentioned me. Thank you, Tim, for mentioning me. I appreciate it. I know it's, he didn't mention me as a favor or anything. He mentioned, mentioned because he thought it was relevant, but nevertheless, I am grateful. That's from Awakening of the Beast. A lot of material from Awakening of the Beast. Let's see if there's something. I have a cool shot of Coffin Joe and this artwork. And no, I'm not covering anything up. I've seen some YouTubers covering <laughs> this stuff up. This shot from Embodiment of Evil. I'm, I'm not showing you every picture. I'm just skipping over a lot of stuff. Just something catches my eye. Now, I'm assuming this is Hallucinations of a Deranged Mind. It could be uh, Black Exorcism, but I, I think that's Hallucinations. Actually, there could be it could be this night I'll possess your corpse. And now, now that I think of it, well, in any case, it's a it's a great image. Is that is that this night I'll possess your corpse? Is it hallucinations of a strange mind? I don't know, but it's an interesting image, isn't it? Oh wow! So that is hellish flesh. That's a great movie, Hellish Flesh. Looks hellish, doesn't it? Ooh, there's. Okay, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show something. Trigger warning. <laughs> this is gross. Okay, so this is this is. This is real life gore. This is so look out if you don't want to watch it, like turn away from the screen. Or not watch it. This isn't a movie. Well, I guess it is a movie, it's a show, but this is an image, a still image. So that is real. That is Mojika's eye. That's from Hellish Flesh. Infernal Carnal. Hellish Flesh. And he so in the movie, his character is burned by acid and then he has what appears to be reconstructive surgery uh, some kind of surgery on his face which you know you was if he's burned by acid of course they're going to do surgery on his face and that's part of that scene and mojika he didn't have his eye operated on just for the film he needed the operation anyway but as long as he was going to have the operation he said i'm going to use it in my movie so he filmed the operation on his eye and used it in that scene. So that is Mojika's real eye. And that's his real surgery on his real eye. Oh, God. Uh, there's Finnis Hominis, the other high-profile character that Mojika authored. Other than Coffin Joe, it's the only other character that has more than one film. Finnis Hominis has two movies. One is titled Finnis Hominis, and the other one is When the Gods Fall Asleep. And it's too bad he didn't make a third Finnis Hominis movie. Maybe the second one didn't do well, I don't know. But I would have liked to have seen a third. I'm not sure where he would have taken it, though, if he had done a third one. I'm not sure if there was any place left for the, for the story to go. This is pretty dark. I don't know if you can see it well. But that's that's Finnis Hollis again. 
I thought about doing a Finnis Hominis cosplay years ago, but it would have been difficult to source all that stuff. It's a complicated costume. I think this is Strange Hostel of Pleasures. This, this image, I think. Quite a, a video, just me flipping through this book. I know it's exciting. There's Oshik Odez. I suppose if there's a third really well-known character that he created, it would be Oshik Odez. And that's, that's him right there. Now, is he really Coffin Joe? Is, is he a different character? So according to Majika, translated through his son, Crow, that was the nickname of the son, Oshik Odez is an alternate universe version of Coffin Joe. So he is Coffin Joe, but in an alternate universe. And Oshik Odez is Zedo Kaisho backwards. And in the opening credits for Strange World of Coffin Joe, which is the movie in which Oshik Odez appears, the opening montage, it, it, it uses photos of Oshik Odez and photos of Zedo Kaisho interchangeably as it's singing this song that's, the, the, that's Zedo Kaisho's theme. Zedo Kaisho, Zedo Kaisho, that's how it goes. And there's Zedo Kaisho. So there's Coffin Joe in all his glory. And on the next page is a girl covered with tarantulas. Lots of nice images of Coffin Joe. Quite a few images of Finnis in here. Here's another good one. Fin Finnis Hominis. Right there. I'm glad that both those movies, because when the gods fall asleep, the second Finnis Hominis movie, that's been very hard to find for a long time. It's been very difficult to find that movie. Something Weird put it out in the 90s, but it was black and white, and it was missing pieces. Then for that festival I told you about, they in, in the festival they showed the only existing complete color print of that film. And as far as I know, that was the only time anyone saw the real movie in the last 30 years until now, and now it's in the set. So I'm looking forward to seeing that and finally, finally seeing When the Gods Fall Asleep properly in color with all the elements intact. There are some difficult scenes in that movie, uh, but they're part of the film. I wanna see the film with those moments in it, even though they may, might be unpleasant. There's Mujika on the set of Embodiment of Evil. Doesn't he look cool? Look at that guy. There's an older Mujika. Yeah, that's also embodiment of evil, but this, he's looking contemplative and he's letting his gray show. After shooting Embodiment of Evil, when he was promoting it two years later in 2008, he dyed his beard black. So the only time he, he was Coffin Joe with a gray beard is in that movie. He would dye it black. Well, I mean, he hadn't officially appeared as Coffin Joe in a long time, but after he, after the the movie when he was promoting it, he dyed his beard black. But in the movie, it's gray. I 
I think that's appropriate in the film. It should Coffin Joe needed a gray beard in that movie. That's interesting. That's the that's near the end of the book. It's not the very end. I don't know who these two are. I don't I don't recognize that. I don't know what film that's from. I I kind of recognize those actors, sort of. That might be Finnis Hominis. I'm not sure. And there he is again. So this book has a lot of Finnis Hominis. There he is again. There's a lot of emphasis on that character in this book. So it's it's a book of of essays, various essays, talking about different aspects of Coffin Joe and Mojica's career. Here's one called The Eyes, Vision and Agony in Jose Mojica Marin's films. Curse Your Faith, Atheism and Catholicism in the Coffin Joe Trilogy. So each of these essays has a different theme, looks at a different aspect of Mujica's career. The Strange Case of Mujica and Zedo Kaisho. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to reading each one of these. The Philosophy of the Sadian Libertine and Coffin Joe. Or is it Sadian? Because it's probably Marquis de Sade. Well, a sadist, so I don't know. I'm going to say Sadian. The philosophy of the Sadian, Libertine, and Coffin Joe. Well, I mean, that that's worth a video right there. Okay, let's... Got a drink. What are we going to do here? I know all these unboxing videos, they just open... I, I'm not... Do I need to open all of these? I don't know. Let's see. This is the end of man. And I'll take that stuff out. Let's see. Here. So each of these things, each of these things have little cards. Each of these cases have little cards. And that's the poster art for Finnis Hominis. And I don't have that poster. I want that poster. If somebody has that poster, I want that poster. This is modern art. This is, I assume, Butcher Billy art. That's the original poster. I want that poster. This is the poster art for When the Gods Fall Asleep. I don't need that poster. Uh, that's, you know, it's, I'm not as crazy about that poster. If I could get it, well, there, that's original art for when the gods fall asleep. You know, it's, it'd be nice to have it. I'd rather have it than not have it, but I wouldn't break the bank for this poster. This one, if you own this poster, call me. Or, or you know, don't, don't call me. Message me, email me. I want this poster. Okay, drink. Is there something to see? Well, that's interesting. Hmm. Well, that is odd. So, this is the art for, well, I mean, that's original art, but this is for Awakening of the Beast. Oh, I see. Because this disc has Awakening of the Beast and Finnis Hominis on it. So, I wouldn't have thought they would have paired those two films. That's an interesting combination. I would have thought they would have... I guess chronologically, I guess it makes sense. I would have thought they would have paired Finnis Hominis and When the Gods Fall Asleep on the same disc. But anyway, so that's why, so that's Finnis Hominis, Awakening of the Beast. And I've heard other people say that some of these contents, it's a little odd how the combinations they, they have. And I, I'm seeing that now. But I understand why they put those together. It's perhaps not what I would have done, but... Now this looks like a Giallo poster. 
This is the the documentary, The Strange World of Jose Mujica Marins. So this is a documentary. This is not a film that Mujica directed. But the, that artwork looks like a jello. Okay, now here's one of the, got a drink. Here's one of the best bonuses in the set. This is Coffin Joe's business card. In this night, I'll possess your corpse, the second Coffin Joe movie. He shows someone his business card, and this is it. Because Coffin Joe has a job. He's a funeral director. Yeah. And, and that's his real name. Joseph Phil Zanatis. Joseph Phil Zanatis. So that's Coffin Joe's real name. If he has a driver's license, that's what that's the name that's on it. Joseph Joseph Zanatis. And Zanatis is Satanas backwards. That's the coolest. If I had multiples of this, I might put one in my wallet. This is the coolest bonus feature, I think, in this set. This is just having Coffin Joe's business card. He crashes a party in This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse because he's after... It's thrown in honor of, I think it's the mayor, the mayor's daughter who was away, I don't know, at school or something, and she's back in town, and he's throwing a party for her, and Coffin Joe crashes the party because he wants that woman and, and he succeeds she's a lot like him she she she's his superior woman she's the woman who sees the world the way he sees the world and she ends up getting together with him but he stopped at the door and I guess he doesn't have a invitation and he shows his card and that gets him into the party I think it's just so intimidating <laughs> That's the way it seems, like, when you, they see the card, like, go on in. Now, this is a promotion for other Aero Video stuff. Okay, drink. There's two cards in this one. Here's the original. Well, this is the new art for... At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul. It's pretty cool. And this is the original poster for At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul. And you might notice that this looks very much like what's hanging on the wall. But this is not a vintage poster. This is a reproduction that Mojica made himself, or he had it made. He commissioned it. And this, this came direct from Mojica. But it would be nice to have an original 60s vintage poster. I, I The only one I've ever heard of was the one in Mojica's collection. He had one hanging on the wall of his office. I don't know if there's another example of this poster in existence. Probably not. You know, an original one. Here's new artwork for This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse. That's pretty cool. I like that artwork. It really looks, it really captures the style and tone of the film. And there's the original one sheet. And I do have that. I, there's a like an A and a B version. I have both. A version B is much more comic book-like. This is more abstract. I've got both of them. That has a cool poster. Very iconic. So this disc pairs at midnight, at midnight I'll Take Your Soul and then the documentary The Strange World of Jose Magic Marines. And there's the At Midnight artwork inside. Very interesting that on the 
outside. It's the documentary. So you wouldn't know that the first film, the main Coffee Joe film, the, the primary one, the one that started it all, is in this case unless you opened it. You might overlook this uh, and say, oh, that's just the documentary. I'll get to that last. When the first film is in there, that is that is an interesting choice. Why why didn't they put the at midnight artwork on the outside? I don't know. I understand why they would pair the documentary with at midnight because then this becomes something that could be sold as a standalone disc. They could sell it just like that. The first Coffin Joe movie, you, it would make sense. They would have a documentary about Magica paired with that first movie. If they were just releasing this movie, you would, that would be the way they would release it with the documentary attached. Either make a new doc documentary or even better, they've got a great one already made. I think this documentary came out in 2000. And it did quite well at the time. It was very celebrated. And I've watched it. It's good. There's a... There's a, there was a more recent one made in Brazil that was also very good. Made about, I don't know, 10 or 12 years after that one. But So I, I understand why they paired the documentary and the first film together, because that makes a nice self-contained set, something that could be sold individually. But I think that, um, well, for sure, I think the artwork on the outside should be at midnight, not not the documentary artwork, which doesn't that look like a giallo? Very much so. Here's Embodiment of Evil, and I am in that movie. That's the poster art for Embodiment of Evil. And uh, they've got the Portuguese title, Encarnação de Demonio. The cards in this set are the Butcher Billy Blu-ray set art, with on the other side it's got the list of films included. And then this, their Jallo style poster art for the documentary. But this is the real name of the documentary, because it's based on this book. And I have this book. So it's sort of like the movie version of this book. This is a biography of Magica. Here is the Butcher Billy art for Embodiment of Evil. And that comes from a scene at the end of the movie. Coffin Joe is, well, I don't want to give it away. I was going to give context to that moment, but that would spoil the movie. Now, this, this disc has a couple of documentaries that were made for the original home video release of this film. And if, it, if it's the same ones that were on the original DVD, and I think also later the Blu-ray that were released in the United States, I am in one of those documentaries. I'm in the movie itself, but I'm also in one of the documentaries. There's a, I, unless they've edited it or changed it or something, I should be in one of those. I think it's the experimental documentary. It's not a great interview. It's not, not nothing to do with the interviewer, but it's me. It's not, you know, I wasn't good in it. Um, it was the night that I was shooting that swamp thing, swamp thing, swamp scene. I was the swamp thing in that scene. Uh, we, we shot half of that scene. It was an all night shoot. And then I, I got to take a break and I was, you know, of course, soaking wet. I was underwater. So I was sloshing away from the from the swamp to this like a break room and sitting down. I had like a towel over me, it's like, Ugh. and I had I guess some Brazilian beans. They eat a lot of beans in Brazil, and I like Brazilian beans. 
uh, I don't know, there might have been some collard greens or something, whatever. And I was eating that. And uh, then the documentarian, I think it was the experimental documentary, it wasn't the, there's like the official documentary, and then there's the experimental one. I think it was the experimental one. He asked if I could, uh, if, if, if I would do an interview while I was eating. So I'm there, wet and uh, tired. It's who knows what time, midnight or something. I don't know. Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay. And I, throughout the, so I'm kind of, as it is, I'm kind of out of it. And I didn't know where, if I was, was I supposed to look at the camera or look off? Because he was directly behind the camera. So should I look at him? So I was, I thought, well, in an interview, I should be looking off camera, right? So I was looking off camera, which is weird because he wasn't really there. And I don't know, I, I was just, blah, 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 just babbling, kind of like I'm doing now. I, yeah, yeah, I, I it was not my finest hour. So if they included them, I just cut that interview out. I wouldn't blame them. But if it's on there, then, and you watch the interview and you're like, wow, he seems kind of, eh. <laughs> well, that was the situation. Then after that interview, I went back into the swamp again. Underwater. Imagine. <laughs> underwater. Oh, I'm getting entangled in my microphone. <sighs> now, it wasn't deep enough to stand in and be submerged. In fact, that it was. I wished it were deeper because it was very hard to stay underwater. Uh, they they kept telling me to exhale, <laughs> blow out some air, and then go under. I felt like I was drowning. I couldn't do that. I tried it and like forget this. I I'm, I'm I feel like I'm being waterboarded. I, I felt like I was drowning. I couldn't exhale and go underwater. I had to inhale. And when I inhaled, then I floated to the surface. So it was very difficult stay underwater and there were some roots and things so I tried to grab onto those and pull myself under to hold myself underwater but then that broke the the nails because I had long coffin Joe nails that was difficult uh, but Mojica liked the results that's what counts all I wanted to do was just I wanted him to say yes fantastic which he when he started doing that kind of shaking his fist like marvelous and you do these exclamations that made it i, I would have stayed underwater <laughs> all week if i had to to just to see him pleased like that because i was worried he would not be pleased i was worried he'd be like why did i invite this guy to be in this good golly what was i thinking but no he was he was happy Okay, what is this? This is The Strange World of Coffin Joe, an anthology movie. And this image is the first story, The Doll Maker. That's what that is based on. Strange World of Coffin Joe, you know, if it were not for the iconic quality of At Midnight being the first film, then I think Strange World would be Mushika's best movie. Uh, and there are many people who think that Strange World of Coffin Joe is the greatest Brazilian horror film. And I, I wouldn't argue with that. At, at Midnight is the first. It has that, that place. Just the fact, the virtue of having been the first is important. But I think at, at Strange World of Coffin Joe is probably the best Brazilian horror movie. Um, at least that's, well, it's not like I've seen every Brazilian horror movie. Brazilian horror fans say that. It's not me. It's Brazilian horror fans hold it up as the pinnacle of Brazilian horror. And it's a pretty great movie. The first story, The Dollmaker, yeah, that seems a little weak. It, it takes a little... It, it has to get warmed up. That story's a good warm-up. That second one is, is about a, a street vendor who sells balloons who falls in love with a woman, becomes obsessed with her, and there's no dialogue in that second film. There, there's no dialogue at all. It's like a silent movie. That is a fantastic work of art. That is great. That is a little masterpiece. That is a beautiful, haunting, eerie film. 
And an obsession is a good word for it because it does have this brooding feeling of obsession. And the, fir- the third movie, Ideology, is the one, one with Professor Oshik Odez, Coffin Joe spelled backward, Zedu Kaisho backwards. Who, he's an alternate universe version of Coffin Joe. And that that is quite a story. That is, that's quite a little movie there. <laughs> that's amazing. The first time I saw that, I, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Um, it's just searing. There's, yeah, the, the, I'm trying to, re- t- trying to remember the first time I saw that. It was shocking, horrifying. It, it really a, a, a gut punch. And then the ending is just glorifying evil and like a just like a celebration of evil it was and and Mojica had to change the ending it was so it was hilariously obvious that he had to tack on this extra ending and apparently that's been removed from this version that that extra ending is like a separate feature you can watch but the real ending as he intended it is what's on this this version Here's the artwork inside of there. I really like that. That's a great image of Coffin Joe. Oh, I did put these back. Strange Hostel of Naked Pleasures. Mojica didn't actually direct this. Some people say he kind of ghost directed it, but it was directed by, officially by an associate of his. He stars in it. Well, he he's, appears as a Coffin Joe-like character. He's definitely Coffin Joe at the beginning, but through the rest of the film, it's not clear whether he's actually Coffin Joe. And the uh, Brazilian title is Strange Hostel of Pleasures, but the naked part is something, something, something weird video. The video company in the 90s put that naked, inserted the word naked in the title. There's the Butcher Billy art. And now you see there's the original poster, Strange Hostel of Pleasures. There's no naked in there. That's a beautiful poster, and I luckily do have that poster. One of my favorite posters, for sure. And it's an amazing, amazing poster. It's perhaps the best Coffin Joe poster. Probably the best one ever made. Now this is odd, though. What's going on here? It's censored? Wow, look at that right in there. How weird that they they censored it. The original poster doesn't look like that. It doesn't have those boxes like that. So strange that they, um, uh, there's so many other images in this set that have nudity, but they would censor this poster. Was this poster put out with boxes like that because these are in English yeah these uh no 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 they it's kind of ridiculous why would they do that I mean there's I mean it's nudity it's not like it's genitalia or something so that's odd that they would they would do that because here this this um is just covering her buttocks but Butcher Billy's got it right there. So why would they, and they're both paintings. That's not a photo, that's a painting, and that's a painting. 
So why would they cover that up, I wonder? Hmm. Um, oh, I love this. There's Hellish Flesh, and that is great. That's the Butcher Billy art. That is fantastic. I think that's the best one of these Butcher Billy alternate movie posters. I, mean, I would love to have a full-size poster of that. And that's the real one sheet. And yes, I've got this. I've got that poster. But I think this is the one case where I think the Butcher Billy art is better than the original art. Or maybe uh, when the gods fall asleep, we'll see what that looks like. Yeah, so here's when the gods fall asleep. This is what the Butcher Billy art looks like. That post, the original one sheet for when the gods fall asleep, that, you know, that's kind of boring. And the Finnis Hominis poster is so beautiful. It's strange that they went with something so subdued for the second film. Okay, here we go. So, this disc that has Strange Hostel of Pleasures and When the Gods Fall Asleep, those are the two movies on this, on this disc. This one has a film by me in the bonus features. A film I made called The Blind Date of Coffin Joe. I made that short film in 2008 and it's here on my YouTube channel if you want to see it. Uh, but I was very, very honored to have that included in this set. Uh, I was very happy that they deemed it worthy of being part of the bonus features for this set. That was very special to me. And in a way, it, I, I like to, to think it sort of canonizes it. <laughs> it's now, this is like the, de the definitive set of Coffin Joe films, and my little film is one of them. So that's nice. That's cool. I like that. Uh, here is Hallucinations of a Deranged Mind. That's a nice alternate poster art for that film. I like the way Mojika looks. That's a good portrait of him. Uh huh. Here is the Butcher Billy poster art for Hallucinations of a Deranged Mind. And there's the original one sheet. Yes, I've got this one sheet. And there's nudity here. I mean, there's nudity. They didn't block that out. This is the Butcher Billy art for Embodiment of Evil. And that is not the poster art for Embodiment of Evil. That's interesting. That's promotional art. And this hand was a big theater standee with the rest of the hand there. So this was about five feet tall or more, five or six feet tall. And it was, this was a theater standee, this hand. I'd love to have that standee. I don't think they made very many of them. They might have just made one, I don't know. I'm sure they didn't make many. And shipping it to the United States would probably be cost prohibitive. The art Inside there is the hellish flesh art. So this this disc has hallucinations of a strange mind and hellish flesh. Did we see? Was there a card for Awakening of the Beast? One of, one of these cards.
I forgot which of these included the business card. I'm going to put it with the first film. Why not? There we go. Even though the card is in the second film, that's where he shows the card. I'm just wondering where is... I don't remember seeing the um, Awakening of the Beast poster. Hmm. This this case is a little doesn't fasten quite right. Ah, here we go. Now, did I neglect to show these? I I must have. I guess I didn't show the. I did show this one, right? Because I think I got caught up talking about the the. The film itself, and I didn't show. I didn't show these cards. Obviously, that's Butcher Billy art for Strange World of Coffin Joe. This is the one sheet. That's the original one sheet for the Strange World of Coffin Joe. I don't have that. That is my number one Coffin Joe poster want. And in fact, I think even just collecting in general toys or posters or masks or anything. That's up there near the top of my want list. I want this poster. I do not have that poster. I want that poster. The Strange World of Coffin Joe, the original one sheet. Not a reproduction, the original one sheet. I only know of, besides the one that would have been in Mujica's collection, I only know of one other in existence, and it's in very bad condition. Not that I wouldn't take it if someone sold it to me, but. It's it's very bad. It would need to be restored, and uh, that's the only other only one I I've heard of. It is uh, a Brazilian filmmaker has that in his collection. This is the Awakening of the Beast, the Butcher Billy art. I uh, I'm not I'm not sure about that art. It looks a little too comic book like a, like a graphic novel comic book. I'm not, I don't know. That's the original poster. Well, one of the original posters, and I, I have this poster, and I also have the poster for the Ritual of the Sadists version. It was a, This film was originally called Ritual of the Sadists. It was a fantastic poster of Coffin Joe, one of the best Coffin Joe images of all time. Not this one, the, the one that they chose not to put on this. This is the Awakening of the Beast poster, but the movie was originally called Ritual of the Sadist, and there's a poster that says Ritual of the Sadist. And I've got both. I've got this poster, and I've got the Ritual poster. And that Ritual poster, it's a shame they didn't do a card for that one. Because that's incredible. That's a beautiful, beautiful Coffin Joe poster. Well, so I, I blew over those the first time on it, because I was talking about the film itself, and I forgot all about looking at those cards well there you go i don't know what else to say about this set it's got a ton of extras ton of bonus features and it'll probably take me months <laughs> to get through that all that stuff uh it's got commentaries by mojica that are subtitled they're the same commentaries i assume that are in a Brazilian box set that he put out many years ago. It has many of the same films, but that box, there are commentaries on them, but they're in Portuguese and I've never been able to understand what he's saying, but some of those commentaries are in this set, but with subtitles now. So I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say. I don't know if he recorded any new commentaries for the films in this set. Uh, I mean, obviously this project, as far as I know, was initiated after he was dead. But I don't know if he has 
that there are commentaries that were more recent than the ones in that Brazilian DVD set. I think, I suspect strongly that the commentaries, Mojica's commentaries for these films were the ones he recorded for that set, which was released, oh, I, I was that before or after he made Embodiment of Evil? It might have been before or around the same time. So it's been a long time. Billy's meowing over there. I don't know if you can hear it. There's a lot of great extras, and it's going to take a long time to, to get through all of those. Now, there's a few films that are not in this set. Most noticeably, the film called Black Exorcism, or under the something weird video title, The Bloody Exorcism of Coffin Joe. There's a great version of it on YouTube that looks good, has subtitles. That film was very difficult to find in the United States for years and years and years. And then it was broadcast on Brazilian television. There was an incomplete one that was on YouTube that's got pieces missing. Don't watch that. But then in the last year or so, someone uploaded a complete version that's obviously ripped from a television broadcast, but it's unedited. It's the complete film. It looks like it was probably broadcast in HD. And whoever uploaded this put English subtitles on it. So for now, that's the way to watch the movie. Watch it on YouTube. Uh, unfortunately, they, they did try to get the rights to that film. It's owned by... It has a different rights holder than the rest of these movies. And they could not negotiate a deal with the rights holder. I had a little technical problem, had to uh, cut, now we're back, but I'm down to one camera, so I better wrap this up, I guess. Uh, I was talking about the, the movie Black Exorcism. Uh, in my Collecting Coffin Joe video last year, I speculated that I thought the producer of that film was dead. I was talking about the posters and the, the memorabilia for that film, and how they were impossible to find, and then suddenly there seemed to be a, a small find of them, and then they became available for a short time, and then now they're unavailable. And I speculated maybe the producer had died, and his effects had been sold, and that's why for a brief time the poster became available. Uh, but I think I was mistaken. I think the producer is still alive. And I know that there was some bad blood between the producer and Mujica. And I, from what I've heard over the years, so if, if that producer is still alive and if they're the, the person that Era was trying to negotiate with, then it's very clear to me why it, the movie's not on here, unfortunately. This is so close to being the definitive Coffin Joe set. It's just missing a few films like that one, most notably. It's also missing a film called Demons and Marvels, which is Mojica's autobiography. His, it's a biographical film. It's short, though. I think it's only 40 minutes long. It's, certainly it's not more than an hour long. But it's Mojica telling his life story. And it, 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 it's, 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 it's a... Like a, a docudrama. It's done as a narrative film, but there's narration on it too. Something Weird Video put it out you know, on, on VHS in the 90s, and it is on that Brazilian DVD set. So it has been out. From what I've heard and read, there apparently is a problem with the music, because Mujica did use some music that I'm sure he had, did not get authorization to use. There's some very recognizable music in that film. And it might be one of the essays in this book. Somewhere, uh, and as has been repeated by other people in reviews of this set, this idea got started that, that Black Exorcism has music that has a rights problem. But then the, the music they're citing is not in Black Exorcism. But I think it is in Demons and Marble. So I think there are 
confusing the two. The I think the problem is the music in Demons and Marvels. That does have music that's obviously it's. I'm not going to say what it is. I don't want to get anyone in trouble, but it's very recognizable music that clearly he didn't. Mujica didn't get the rights to use. So that's I think is why that movie is not on here, unfortunately. Another important Mujica horror movie that's not on here is Perversion, which is kind of a sister film to Hellish Flesh. It's very similar. It's also sort of a like Hellish Flesh. It's kind of an EC Comics type of a horror revenge story, and it's a really good movie. It's not a Coffin Joe movie. Coffin Joe is not in it at all. But Mojica is in it. He's the star. And it's really good. And it's really a shame that it's not on here. I don't know why. I don't know why it would be owned by a different company than the rest of these. Perversion is not on that Brazilian box set. So maybe it is owned by a different company. I don't know. It has a very graphic, graphic, graphic ending. You, you really don't see a lot. But just the idea of what's happening is so gruesome and shocking. Maybe it was a bridge too far. Maybe it was too much to include. I mean, there's stuff in the rest of these films that is pretty shocking, but maybe that one was just a little too much. I suspect it's that wasn't. I suspect it was a rights problem with that film, like just like Black Exorcism, I guess, because that perversion is not on the Brazilian box set. Uh, there's also a, a movie called The Curse, or A Curse. The Portuguese title is A Praga, and it's, I, it might be a short film. I don't know if it's feature length. Uh, I haven't seen it. It's a movie Mojica made sometime around 1980, thereabouts. It's a movie version of one of the stories in the Coffin Joe comic book from the late 60s, early 70s, which I showed you on the Collecting Coffin Joe video. It's a movie version of one of those stories. And uh, Mujica shot it originally back in the day, but he didn't finish it. He, he completed it sometime after Embodiment of Evil in the 21st century. He completed it and he shot new introductions because Coffin Joe is like the crypt keeper introducing the story and commenting on the story as it goes along. So he shot new footage of himself as Coffin Joe doing that and someone or some company helped him put it together and it was supposed to come out a long time ago like around the time of Embodiment of Evil and it didn't. And then I, I heard something more recently about it, but as far as I know, it's still not available. I don't know when it's going to be available. I, I'd like to see it, obviously. I wish it were. I, I, I was thinking it would be in this set, but it's not. Hopefully that'll get a release eventually. Another film is Trilogy of Terror, which is not the Dan Curtis film. That's uh, a Brazilian anthology, horror anthology. Mojica directed one of the three stories. The other two are directed by other people, but he, he directed one called Nightmare, which is very good. And I've seen that, and that is on the Brazilian box set. The entire Trilogy of Terror movie feature film is not on the box set, but that, that segment, the Nightmare segment that Mojica directed, that is in the box set. And it's good. I mean, it's it's should be you know part of the canon but it's uh as far as i know it's not on i don't i haven't heard that it's in this set and looking through the features i didn't see it i mean it could be hiding in there somewhere i don't know but i don't think it's on there and that also could be owned by a different company because Majika didn't direct the whole thing he just directed one story so maybe it's a rights problem maybe a different company controls that movie i don't know uh, what else could they have on here? Mijika made several short films, you know, a little this, a little that, over the years. He made a movie that's not a horror movie. It's called The Prophet of Hunger. That is not a horror movie, but it's got, it's sort of, um, 
Coffin Joe friendly. The poster has Coffin Joe on it. I don't have that poster. I want that poster, Prophet of Hunger. Coffin Joe is on the poster, but he's not in the movie. The movie is not really a horror movie. And as far as I know, Coffin Joe isn't anywhere to be seen. I mean, I've, I've never watched the movie from start to finish. I've seen a good deal of the film, but I've never, because I've never had a subtitled version that I could watch. So I've skimmed through it. I've watched, you know, all total, probably half the movie. So I've got a good idea what it's all about, but uh, I'm not going to watch it from start to finish until I have got a subtitled version so I can really appreciate what's going on because it's more of a drama and um, or a dark, com- dark comedy kind of a thing. And it's, it's not um, something that's visually kinetic where you can just be entertained by the visuals. You really need to know what people are saying. But it kind of is in the same vein as Finnis Hominis, sort of adjacent to those films. So that's another film that, I mean, he made a lot of movies, Mojica. There's a lot of things they could do, but those are just some off the top of my head that you know, they could do a, another set if they wanted, if they could get the rights to all this stuff. There's enough out there to do another set. And he, he made some crime movies and stuff. He made a lot of different things. There's enough out there for another set. It wouldn't be inside the mind of Coffin Joe. Maybe it'd be inside the mind of Mujica. They could come up with another catchy title. But there is enough material to have a good, decent, quality Blu-ray set of the, these other films. There really there could be a volume two of this thing. It wouldn't be Coffin Joe necessarily. If they get Black Exorcism and The Curse, there would be Coffin Joe material in the set, but they probably want to call it something else because most of the films would not be Coffin Joe. So it's too bad they they couldn't get the other stuff, squeeze it into the set, and make it just the ultimate, definitive, all-time greatest, can't-be-beat Coffin Joe set. As it stands, I do think it is the definitive Coffin Joe set but it's not the most complete Coffin Joe set. That Brazilian collection, it, well, you know, it doesn't have When the Gods Fall Asleep. And it doesn't have uh, Embodiment of Evil. So I don't know. It's kind of... Um, it, it sort of balances out. Uh, but all total, I think I'd have to say that the the Brazilian set is the more complete set. Not the better set, but the the more complete set. But this does have some things that that set doesn't have, and that set has some things that this set doesn't have. And these are restored, remastered Blu-rays, 4K. Well, but they're, these aren't 4K discs, these are Blu-rays, but they're remastered in 4K. And these are, uh, as far as I know, 1080 Blu-rays. The other set is DVD, standard definition. Anyway, I think um, I would like to see a volume two and uh, I think there'd be an audience for it. I think this is getting, I'm very pleased that this is getting a lot of publicity. A lot of people are interested. I think a lot of people are gonna be introduced to Coffin Joe. People who've never seen a Coffin Joe movie before are gonna see these for the first time. And I hope it leads to a a renaissance of Coffin Joe, of interest in Coffin Joe and Mujica's work, and curiosity about his other films, which would then lead to the marketability of a second set, I hope. It would be nice. It would be nice. I guess that's it. I'm just looking at my monitor over there to make sure I'm not, my, my second, my, my last remaining camera isn't gonna crash on me. This camera's gone. <laughs> Can't, don't have two cameras anymore, so I can't hold this like I was doing. There you go. So there's your unboxing video of Inside the Mind of Coffin Joe. What do you think of that? I did it. I did the unboxing video. Are you happy? Those who wanted me to do that, I hope you're pleased. I did it. I did the unboxing video. And I tried to sort of do it my way and offer some things that maybe other people couldn't offer like pronouncing Mujica's name correctly.
but also giving some insight into this and that. I guess that's it. I'm, I am better just wrap it up before this camera crashes on me and then I've got nothing. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're interested in Coffin Joe, buy this set. I mean, it's not going to get better than this anytime soon. This is the pinnacle of, of Coffin Joe on home video. This is it. If you want to watch Coffin Joe, this is how you do it. Until another set comes along, this is it. If you want Coffin Joe in your house, on your TV, this is the way to do it. Get this set. And I am in Embodiment of Evil. I have my own film, Blind Date of Coffin Joe. I'm probably in that documentary that's on Embodiment of Evil. And then Tim Lucas mentions me in that essay. So if you like me, you're watching this channel, uh, then there's, there's some reasons to get it because you'll see me and read about me in, these, in this side, in this material. I'm definitely in there. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. Billy never came up. Billy was here. He was meowing, but he never jumped up. He, I wish he would. We only saw him one time this season. He needs to come back up here. Uh, maybe I just need to shoot a video about Billy and just get him here and hold him down. It's like, hey, Billy, say hello to the people. It's too bad he doesn't jump up here anymore. I guess he's, he's over that. Well, thank you very much. Until next time, the one who dies with the most toys is dead. <laughs>